everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having an unbelievable start to your week. Look, uh, I'm not going to be long. I'm going to try to get directly into this, but you know the routine. If you like what you see in here, uh, if you feel it has meaning, purpose, or uh, inspires you in any way, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. For those of you who have followed me for any time, for those of you who are getting to know who I am and the work I do in the inner city community uh, by way of our website, by way of actually having contacted us and sought help or by observing uh, the things that we share about what we're doing, uh, we need your support. Look in the description box and give. Uh, for those who don't have a heart to give, no need to comment, just don't give. It's real simple. Uh, what applies, applies. What does not, does not. Uh, this one is going to be short, but extremely controversial. Probably going to tick off a lot of my uh, Christian evangelic uh, friends. Um, and you know what I've said from the beginning. I'm not here to be liked. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm not here to become popular. I'm not here to go viral. I've been saying that for 14 years now uh, and saying it before there was ever uh, any social media, what it, what it is today. I've been saying that I'm not here for the purpose of building a following of people who just support me because I say what they want to hear. I did, uh, when I was behind the pulpit, I did not preach from that perspective. I have always sought the truth. I have always came hard with the truth and I have made enemies in the church, enemies in politics, enemies in business, because I'm going to always say what I believe to be the truth. Uh, I always often say as well that I do not preach, teach, or lecture from a platform of perfection. I don't have all the answers. I don't always make the right decisions, but I always aim to be my best self and to do the best I can to help the people that I have the ability to reach. That's it in a nutshell, but let me talk here um, as it states in the title field. Black Christians have been pent in the corner between their relationship with God and their uh, political affiliation, uh, predominantly with Democrats. While the numbers do show that more blacks are now not, uh, that the number of blacks identifying as being a part of the Democrats uh, Democratic Party has diminished. Uh, we're still looking at the high 80s, almost 90 percent. And then we have to examine what this dysfunctional love affair has meant for blacks over the roughly 55 plus years that it has existed. Uh, remember, blacks were predominantly Republican before uh, the, 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 the sort of transition that took place between Democrats, Dixiecrats, then Republicans and flip into a two party system. And the game is being run. It has been run every, ever since. And so we're talking about the sixties when we really start to see this really, really take shape. And since, uh, the sixties and the voters right act. Blacks have consistently turned out in increasing numbers every presidential cycle with except for one and voted uh, roughly along the lines of 90 plus percent Democrat. And then you have to ask yourself in the sense of tangibles, what did blacks get out of this? And you have to look at it and see that we really not only did not get anything out of it, some of the worst hits we have taken in policy have come under Democratic, uh, Democrat, uh, the Democratic Party administration. Administrations. The Johnson administration did a wonder on us in the 60s and the Clinton administration uh, in the uh, 1990s. And we have to 
be aware of some of the shenanigans that were played during the Obama administration as well. I know that breaks a lot of your hearts and upsets you, and we love to get caught up in emotional tangents and go off on emotional rants and, and, and say what we feel without having any tangible, tangible, empirical, or pragmatic information or data to support the idea. It's just how we feel. And that's what Democrats have played uh, uh, and pr played and preyed on for nearly 60 years. And let's be clear, it's a shame that I have to say this, but this is just simply how well programmed we are. Because I am taking aim at the Democrats does not mean in any way I am a Republican, does not mean any way that I am a Trumpster. What it means is I'm not played by either side of this spectrum the left wing and the right wing belong to the same bird and that bird has been shitting on the heads of black people for decades and i'm aware of it and it's just dependent upon what you can get and the democrats draw my ire because of how they play my people they throw the race card every chance they get they do grandstanding things like file for um what is it impeachment and and all kind of other stuff and 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 all these things to create this facade that they're fighting for us but under the surface we aren't gaining any ground and we don't really pay attention to it because we've been trained and programmed to be entertained and literally they're putting on a show for us this whole trump thing is a show and nobody's looking under the surface all this stuff that's going on with trump and nobody's paying attention to what's happening on the surface. The, the Democrats, Biden especially, um, approval rating is tumbling. And the more they attack this man on the other side, the more popular he becomes. And we don't know how and we can't explain why, but we get more and more enraged and frustrated and we dig in. We dig in because they are attacking our way of life. We don't have a way of life. We don't have a quality of life. We have a wealth gap that is 177000 for their median household wealth and seventeen for ours. We don't have footing. We don't have anything to defend. We are not on anything of any subs substantial matter. My problem, though, isn't even all of this stuff that we should be aware of and we should be fighting for and standing for. Here's the problem I have. And this is the problem I have when I say that, that, that cr my Christian brothers and sisters are pent in in a wall in conflict with themselves between their relationship with God and their political affiliation uh, and their uh, and their need to defend themselves in their blackness. And they somehow see it as being mutually exclusive, but in, in, inextricably bound together. And it's confusing and it will literally drive you insane. And you don't know why you are constantly frustrated, even when you can't identify the source of your frustration. It's because of the cognitive dissonance that's flowing between the conflict that you're having about your commitment to God and your commitment to a party that has convinced you that it's acting on your best interest when in truth it is screwing you equally, if not greater than the other party now now let me let me tell you what i mean when i say in conflict see i have this relationship with god but in my relationship is just that it is an understanding of god as the creator as god as the ultimate source as god as the standard of what you aspire to be it says be hope be holy because I'm holy. And what God says, be holy, and you have to understand what this is meant because holy is actually an archaic word used in the King James English or, or, or what we would call Old English. It is a word used then that does not really truly convey what it meant in the Hebrew. And in the Greek. So then when you explore it, what it means is when God says, be holy for I am holy. What is he saying? He's saying that 
I have set the standard of righteousness. I have set the standard of power. I have set the standard of optimal existence in my declarations, but also in my actions. And what does I, he says, be holy for, what is he saying? He's saying that my character are the standards that I presented to you and the do nots and the do's and all of that. My integrity or my holiness is a reflection that I've never broken my own laws, that I operate without any type of immutable immutability i mean any type of mutability it's it's completely immutable i am who i am and i don't change i always answer the bell in living up to my own standards that's what holiness is it's integrity see character are the values integrity is the strength to execute the values so you have god's word which is his values then you have god's actions which is his holiness so then when I'm looking at that relationship, then my goal is to aspire to a certain level of righteousness, not based on religion, but based on relationship and experience. Because the closer you get to God, the less you have to have somebody else tell you what God wants for you or expects from you. It will automatically align because you extend from God. You are a reflection of God. You are an image of God in your ability. And so... In that, and these are some things they don't want you to know. These are some things that they hide from you that any minister who has spent any time truly understanding and breaking down any of the religions will tell you is the way that it is. You can sit up and you can take it, but, 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 but what we want to do, we would rather have these debates and intellectual pissing contests about all the things and, and the different schisms and, and factions and sects and, and all these other different things that come out of the religion versus the true nature of the power, which everyone's trying to keep us from through all kind of little stuff that plays on our emotions and our ignorance and we don't ever walk in it but when you truly have a connection with god there's some things that you understand that god does not like god does not want god does not expect from you as a self-professed and proclaimed follower of god and in the state of christianity christ what are some what, what, what we know for a fact that a bunch of the things that the democrats push in their liberalism is in direct and uh, diametric opposition to what the word says. We've gotten to the point now that we will literally twist what we know based on what we have declared as the authoritative source of, of Christianity, the Bible. We'll take what we know to be in there and start to reinterpret it to start to re-examine it to create leeway and latitude to do what they are saying is okay to do so that we can stay behind them and support what we know we shouldn't be supporting. The biggest problem is you can't be rewarded for claiming a faith that you're not functioning optimally in. See, if we're going to go through the doctrine of salvation and then we look at uh, all the other elements and components of Christianity outside of salvation, we have to understand the doctrine of salvation is about an eternal right. It is not about what we are going to be judged upon based on what we do. See, that's a difference. See, you're looking at salvation and your eternal relationship. I'm looking at the entire responsibility to function as a reflection of God in this world, to be an illumination and a light and an encouraging and an inspirational factor in showing people what's possible through the righteous living and i'm not talking about all of this all this uh holier than thou right i'm talking about how am i serving the people who are in need how am i treating my significant other how am I, when i when, when i have one when i get one get y'all ease up but y'all know what i mean y'all know how i am about the person i love 
But how am I treating that person? How am I exploring relationships and situations? How am I handling business and all these different things? And it's a growing process. You're learning, you're building, you're getting, but your goal is to be a reflection of God. I cannot be in true honesty with myself and say I'm in direct correlation with reflecting God when I'm operating and supporting principles pushed upon me by a group of people who have shown me over time that they do not have my best interest. We quickly forget that it's the president that's in the office now that stood up and told us in the 70s that he refused to support any type of busing legislation that will put blacks in white communities turning the places where his kids go to school into a jungle. We forget that, we forget that this is the same man that wrote the legislation for the crime bill that made it disparagingly different penalty for the type of cocaine a person possessed one being powder cocaine one being crack knowing that white powder cocaine is predominantly used by white people and crack cocaine was in the impoverished neighborhoods predominantly black at the time that disproportionality has still played out the, the disproportionality in sentencing for crimes of marijuana all of which now many states that crap is legal other states won't even prosecute it and yet here we are our males are and our men are still suffering because of it and it comes from a person that's sitting behind the oval office desk right now and he told you before the uh, election where he was elected that if you didn't vote for him you weren't black you so in other words you have a white man defining your blackness and using uh, uh, gaslighting to manipulate you and then they throw out the look at the racist card the whole thing has been now this is what I'm gonna do and then I'll be done with it because I can go on and on about this um, this is this is the thing where the whole gaslighting thing is I'm not giving you if you're a black person. Now, if you are a Latino, if you are Asian, we we're going to deal with Asian uh, hate. We're going to deal with what's going on in the Latino community. We're going to give you what you need. We're even going to bring in immigrants from the south of the border, put them off into these. Guess what? Democratically ran cities. If you look at the cities that are sanctuaries for the immigrants who are illegally entering across the border in the South right now, you're going to find out that these are all Democrat ran cities and they are providing subsidies for these people to live, ultimately leading to them having citizenship rights in the United States and increasing the uh, majority of other minorities outside of blacks further making uh, blacks irrelevant in this country. Your ten, your your, your ten percent voting block is getting smaller, and it's being done to you by the very people that you sit up and you have gone hard in the paint for for day one. And how do they gas you up to vote? They don't give you something like they're giving them. They tell you at least it's not him. So everybody points at Trump. And says, at least it's not him. It's not them racist people. It's least, you know, it's it's the lesser of two evils. Now go into your word, go into your Bible, go into your Quran, go into whatever sacred and ancient books of, of, of whatever, but specifically my Christians. Go into your Bible and find out anywhere in the Bible where it tells you that God wants you to go for the lesser of two evils. Evil is evil, no matter how, what gravity or level it is and the idea and here's the crazy thing that about you guys will go ham in the paint when somebody says they're not voting you'll tell a lie because it was told to you people died for you to vote man the people were marching for a bunch of things and the least of it was the vote we had the right to vote the moment we were freed that was part of the 13th amendment what they were dealing with in the South was the resetting of the uh, antebellum South, which happens doing, happened during Reconstruction, when they pretty much ran the Union, uh, Union Army installations back to the North because they kept bombing them, kept setting stuff on fire, kept shooting and sniping guerrilla warfare. And so they just felt it was too costly. They withdrew. When they withdrew, they left blacks on their own in the South. And they started 
redefining and returning things to the antebellum south as much as they could they couldn't name it certain things but they they couldn't say you couldn't vote but they made it impossible for you to be able to vote but through the policies through the laws through the qualifications all the things a lot of this stuff is still happening now but and this is after the civil rights uh voting act of 1963 uh it, it's still happening 66 63 64 and so he, he, here's the thing You've got all this going on, right? They're telling you, okay, you're not, you know, we're not the e less of two evils. But here's the thing. You are screwing me more than this guy. This guy says stuff that sounds stupid to me. This guy goes out and does stuff. The stuff that he does actually isn't an issue for blacks. It's an issue for middle class whites who are feeling their privilege slip away. And actually it's 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 a problem for uh, let me let me let me take that back. Upper middle class. So people with six figure median household incomes and higher. Anybody under that regardless of race. That if they're white, that's where he's getting his power from. That's the predominant number. Those are where the numbers are coming from. That's how he won last time, even though he didn't have the popular vote. He had it where he needed it, and he got the electoral vote, which is, again, another screw job that they did on us. We don't really truly select any. We don't really truly elect anybody. We'll select. They select who they want us to pretend, shoot after and play with them, and they control through the electoral college how it's going to play out. And there's a number of different ways that that can be done. I don't have time to get into that now, but what I will tell you is this. This. When we look at what we're supposed to be doing as believers, no matter where you are in your walk and how you move and how I identify and how I move is probably different than you. And I'm not better than you. I'm just in a different space with my walk and my connectivity with God. And everybody has to be on their own journey. That's something we also need to learn is we need to stop crapping on people because they're not where we're at. We need to start. The thing should be, you should be living your life in such a way that people will look at the life you're living and going, how are you doing it? Whatever you're doing, I want to be a part of it. That's how you evangelize, not by your yap yap, but by how you walk. And especially when you're moving in adversity or you're moving against things that challenge you. When people are sitting up and you, you, you're you meeting adversity, how are you dealing with that? Where's your integrity when you got to choose whether you get the contract or not based off of how you make your stand on what you truly believe? These are the things that we should be looking at. And what I look at is you guys don't even pay attention like this whole Fannie Willis thing. I'm sitting up watching it and you guys don't read. You don't read because if you read, you would know the playbook by now. The playbook is they have a tendency Democrats to use black faces specifically and often female faces to take down their white male opposition. And once they do it, they tend to eat their own. Kim Gardner, um, it's another one off in the St. Louis area that's just not coming to me now. Uh, Mosby from Baltimore, uh, Lance Bottoms from Atlanta. I can go on. Uh, 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 weird looking one from Chicago. God forgive me, I shouldn't have called her weird, but that one. Uh, cannot think of her name now, but think about it. When the conservatives, Republicans, right wingers depending on where you want to call them because they all fall in different things you got to pay attention to the vernacular because right wingers and conservatives and republicans are all probably going to fall in the republican category but how they think and how they move and what their motive are is different and you've got to understand the same thing with liberals conservatives democrats mainstreamers all this stuff is things you need to understand because when it's being used it's being used in code to communicate cross lines and to impact how we think the average person is going to hear right and think republican no matter what and uh uh and, and we think left, you're going to think Democrat no matter what. And you're not going to think motive, intent, and uh, modus operandi. And you're going to be a victim of the system. I've written in 
in extensively on the myth of the two party system and the true nature of a democracy versus what we actually live in, which is a piss poor uh, uh, republic. But what you have to look at is they eat their own. The, the, the conservative side, they'll sit up and use people, then they end up with speaking careers. You see them and they're flourishing in their after politics life. Whenever the last time you heard of what's the, the, the black woman that they just blew up uh, that was running for governor at one time and, and um, I can't think of her name, but where is she now? Kim Gardner is facing prosecution. Mosby, the DA out of uh, Baltimore, is facing prosecution. Last Bottoms just boost out. She's off doing social media Instagram bull crap. That's, that is, and she comes from a prominent political family in Atlanta. But this is what happens when you don't understand your party. They are lethal. And what they've resulted to, they've played the hustle game and mind game so long that now that it's actually come to a point where they got to put up or shut up, they don't have nothing to put up because they're not used to doing it. They're throwing everything against the wall right now, hoping it's going to stick. And that's one thing. But my thing is, when did it become okay to compromise your relationship with God in order to remain in good standing with any type of affiliation, political or otherwise? That's the question. And when you come to the truth of that answer, inside of that truth lies the truth of your real true empowerment. And you're going to find out that no political party can give you that. It's something you have to seize on your own. The violent take it by force. So that's on that note. And I'm going to get out of here. Once again, I want to thank you. Um, again, if you believe in the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project, from uh, research to our rite of passage initiative, mental health programs, uh, domestic violence or programs, etc. Look in the description box and give. On that note, I'm out here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Yeah. Yeah. They said I should give it up. Like I just ain't good enough. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. I'm free to be